So then we'll move on to Honorable Peter David. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I just want to apologize for Marcus Lavaman, who is out of the country, and he extends his apologies for not being here. I stand here today not only as a, as a member of parliament for the town of St. George, but as a lifelong friend of the Cyrus family. Many may not know this, but my mother was born and grew up on H.E. Blaze Street and was a friend of the family. In fact, Wangi's great-grandmother, Miss Omega, was always at our home as a child, when I was a child. So I stand here as nearly part of the family. So on behalf of my family, on behalf of the people of the town of St. George, I extend profound condolences to Liz, his brothers and sisters, his extended family, his son Xavier, and all those who knew him and called him a friend. I want to pay special tribute to Liz, who has always been there with Vaughn through thick and thin. I have always been in touch with her. When she was out of the country, she would call, so Liz, I want to say to you, you've done your part. The rest is up to God. But you can rest assured that we all admire what you've done for and with Vaughn. Many knew Wangi by what they read in the newspapers or heard in the news. And he did make the news several times. But there are many of us who know the real Wangi, the original Wangi, the son, the father, the friend. I, know both, I knew both Wangis, for better or for worse. Over the years, I came to know him from a youngster to the Wangi, who, as I said, made the news. What amazes me is the number of people who have said to me that while they knew he had some issues, they saw him in the news, they also knew Wangi as a kind, thoughtful, gentle, generous person. One lady told me she heard a lot of things about Wangi. She didn't know him. So she was so surprised when several people called her after his death saying, that he was such a good boy. One senior prosecutor said to me the day after his death that even after he prosecuted Wangi for many years, he met Mangi, Wangi not long before he died, and Wangi gave him a bounce and said, boss, you're good, after he prosecuted for many years. I heard magistrates say that he was so respectful when coming to court. In other words, there was a Wangi and a Wangi. And we all in here knew both. You see, brothers and sisters, the point I'm making is that, like all of us, Wangi had good angels and not so good angels. And at one point or another, everyone who knew him might have had the good fortune or misfortune to interact with both angels. I knew I did. Yes, he was flawed, but despite his propensity to be rebellious, Wangi was at his core a good kid. And that is why there are so many of you here today and so many online witnessing this service. In the prevailing violent crime that has recently spiked in our country, and with Wangi's passing a highlight of that, how do we deal with this and address his untimely and violent death? How do we treat with that? What do we say today at his funeral in the presence of his family and friends? 
Are we to talk about violence and recrimination? Are we to allow his legacy to be that of more turmoil in our communities? Are we to sit by and watch further violent conflicts among the children of hardworking mothers and fathers? Or are we to let his better angels, his better angels, guide us to a better place? We all must learn and grow from every experience, and this is one such experience. For as tragic as it is, it is a lesson that I am sure his own mother, my dear Liz, and maybe even Wangi himself will agree that we must all learn. We must all learn from. I certainly would like to think so. Our collective lesson as a community is that we must come together to find a way to save our sons and daughters, including developing systems for mentorship and deepening our very sense of community. My brothers and sisters, I implore all of us together to restore peace. And while the crimes that we have witnessed respect no demographic, I especially address our young men today on this altar, in the presence of a grieving community, in the presence of the women and men who gave birth to you and struggled to raise you. Please, I implore you, cease the violence. For all it leaves in its wake are the tears of your mothers and your children. They have shed too many tears. Don't let them cry anymore. Please, working class people's children must stop killing working class people's children. Plain talk. We must instead, we must instead come together and unite in the struggle to make a better way. Not just for this generation, but for the next. We must rise from the depths of our circumstances and prevail against the odds. Being working class isn't criminal. Let's not paint it as such. Working class is a gateway to better. I speak of the working class today because they are my project and my platform in law and in politics. I am committed to showing our young people from hard-working families that they can rise above. Violence leads to a dead end, literally, literally and figuratively. As we sit in mourning here today and as we examine our own lives, let it be said that on this day, we made a commitment to save our communities, to restore our families, to take back our young men and young women. I call on our youth from the Carnage to Four Roads, from Fenton Village to the Bronx, from St. David to St. Patrick, from St. Mark to St. George's, Cariacu to Petit Martinique, and places in between to work together to build our families and our communities to save our children. Be the poster for how the seemingly impossible can become possible. We are all children of someone. We are all children of hard-working parents. Let us honor their sacrifice. Let us be humbled by their tears. Let Wangi's child, Xavier, and Arthur, brave boy's son, reap the benefit of a peaceful community fostered by their father's death. Cease fire now, today. Permit me to use this opportunity to commend the group of colleague lawyers who have come together to help to deal with this issue of violence in our society. They all know Wangi and have represented young people from across the land in our courts. The, lawyer, the lawyers have established what they call the ceasefire initiative to assist in quelling this violence. They, along with many people in our community, are on the front lines of this battle. Our own Archdeacon Marshal sitting here overseeing this service is part of that initiative. Several young people have made commitment to assist. I commend them for their courage and I will hold them to it as I continue to work with everyone in this fight to achieve the desired end, the restoration of a beloved warm 
friendly and tranquil Grenada. Today is a sad day. We miss our young brother, Wangi Von Cyrus. We miss him. We all do. We mourn his mom and his offspring. We remember his better angels. And we pledge not to let his death go in vain. Instead, let his blood be the fertilizer that nourishes the soil that brings forth peace and development in our communities. Today we all weep. Tomorrow we do better by each other and for each other. We can and we will, for the very future of this nation depends on us to do so. I thank you. May God bless you.